Hi everybody, welcome to our first Read Aloud Friday. Um, I have a whole stack of books that I have pulled out from the church library. So a lot of them maybe are books you've never read before, which is really exciting. Um, I'm gonna read one every Friday. And today, the book that I'm gonna be reading is from a book series called The Mess Detectives. And this book is called Dial M for Mercy. So if any of you have watched Veggie Tales, this is a big idea or Veggie Tales book with Larry the cucumber and Bob the tomato and some other friends too. So let's get started. The Mess Detectives, Dial M for Mercy by Doug Peterson. Case number 578. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be shown mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to read is silly. The names have been changed to protect the serious. This is our city, a city of messes. Our job is to get people out of them. We are the Mess Detectives. My name is Detective Larry the Cucumber, and my partner is Bob the Tomato. He carries a badge. I carry a badger. Don't ask why. Ten o six a.m. Bob and I were working the mess watch when we got a phone call on our mess line. The mess line was something new. If people were in a mess, they simply dialed M on their telephones to reach us right away. Bring! This is the mess line, I said. Do you have any monkeys for sale? Asked the person on the phone. Monkeys? Something was wrong. I could sense it. Sorry, wrong number, I snapped. We handle messes, not monkeys. I slammed down the phone. I was mad because our mess line was messing up. For some strange reason, people had been dialing M for monkeys instead of M for messes. They had a lot of nerve. 10.30 a.m. While riding around in our police car, we spotted Percy P. dragging a huge load of newspapers. My name is Detective Larry, and this is my partner Bob, I told Percy as I took out my notebook. Bob carries a badge. I carry a badger. Don't ask why. What seems to be the problem? Asked Bob. Percy sighed. I delivered Laura's newspapers today, he said. But I lost five dollars of her delivery tips. She's going to be mad. How did it happen? Bob asked. I have a hole in my pocket, Percy said. Did you know that? Percy looked away. Yeah, I knew. My mom told me to wear different pants today so she could fix the hole, but I really like these pants, so I wore them anyway. I could see why he wanted to wear them. They were spiffy pants. 10.36 a.m. Laura Carrot came strolling down the sidewalk straight for us. If she found out that Percy had lost her newspaper money, things could get ugly. Run for it, I shouted to Percy. No, don't run, Bob corrected, rolling his eyes. Listen, Percy, everyone messes up sometimes. If you tell Laura what happened and say you're sorry, she might have mercy on you. Mercy? Percy asked. What's that? Well, mercy is when someone gives you a second chance after you've messed up, Bob said. God wants us to show mercy, Percy. You can be mercy, Percy, I laughed. That's funny. I made a note of that. Bob just rolled his eyes. 10.38 a.m. I couldn't believe it. When Percy told Laura what had happened, she was really disappointed, but she didn't get mad. Mistakes happen, so don't worry about it, she said to Percy, but I'd get that pocket fixed if I were you. Laura forgave him. She showed mercy. I started to make a note of that when my pencil broke. Drat, can you sharpen this? I asked my badger. My badger sharpened the pencil with his teeth as we drove back to headquarters. 
it looked like the case was closed. Or so we thought. One o five p.m. We were eating Sundays when we got another call on the mess line. Mess detectives here, I answered. I would like an order of meatloaf, said the person on the other end. Meatloaf? The mess line was messing up again. You're supposed to dial M for messes, not for meatloaf, I yelled into the phone. I felt like dialing M for mad. 1.10 p.m. While driving up and down the city streets, we passed a lemonade stand and spotted Junior the asparagus. He looked upset, so we stopped to find out why. Anything wrong? asked Bob. There sure is, Junior muttered. I was helping Percy P. with his lemonade stand today when I set a dollar on the table and the wind blew it away. I lost Percy's money. 'Well, didn't Percy have a box for the money?' Bob asked. "'Well, yeah,' said Junior. "'That's why I felt so bad. Percy told me not to put the money on the table, but I didn't think anything would happen.' Junior had messed up big time. "'Don't worry, Percy. Don't worry, Percy will understand,' I explained. Laura showed mercy to Percy, so I'm sure Percy will have mercy on you. Mercy, Percy, get it?' I really cracked myself up. "'Well, that's just it.' When I told Percy what I did, Junior sobbed. He was so mad. He said I had to work at his lemonade stand all week without getting paid. I was shocked. To top it off, my pencil broke again. I looked to my badger for help. 2.30 p.m. Bob and I drove through Bumbleburg looking for Percy. We needed to pick him up for questioning. As we pulled into the donut shop parking lot, our car phone rang. Mess line, I answered. Yeah, I'd like a mall, two mouse traps, and a marimba, said the person on the other end. I slammed down the phone. Someone had really messed up. People were dialing M for malts, mouse traps, marimbas, meatloaf, and monkeys. I made a note of that. Then I made a note of how mad I was getting when my pencil point broke again. And guess what happened? You got it. My badger sharpened it. And that's when we spotted Percy. He was on the run. 2.37 p.m. We tore out of the parking lot and flew around the corner. Bob's face smushed against the window as I pulled the police car to the curb, tires screeching. Bob and I leaped out of the car and blocked Percy's path. Stop in the name of messes, Bob shouted, showing his badge. I showed my badger. My badger growled, and Percy came to a sudden stop. He was out of breath. Why are you running, Bob asked. I'm trying to get away from Laura, Percy gasped. Laura said I had to pay her all the money I lost after all, but this morning she said she wasn't even mad. 2.40 Why do you think she changed her mind, Bob asked. That was a good question. I don't know, but I have to go, Percy sputtered. Are you sure you don't know why she changed her mind? Bob asked. Percy looked around, afraid that Laura was right behind him. I, I guess she talked to Junior Asparagus. Why did she change her mind after talking to Junior? Bob continued. I had no idea where Bob was going with this. 2.41 Well... Percy looked Bob straight in the eyes. Maybe she was mad when she found out about Junior. What about Junior? Bob would not let up. She probably heard Junior lost my money. That's right, Bob confirmed. And what did you do? I was still clueless. I got really mad, Percy confessed. Yet Laura showed you mercy when you lost her money, Bob reminded him. Suddenly, it all made sense. You didn't show mercy, I said sadly. You weren't mercy, Percy. Percy stared at the ground. 2.42 God knows we all mess up sometimes, 
That's why he wants us to give everyone a second chance, I explained. He wants us to show mercy to each other, Percy. I guess I messed up again, Percy moaned. Yeah, but you can change all that, Bob told him. Percy looked up. You think so? Sure, you can still show Junior mercy. Okay, I'll do it, Percy announced. Besides, it's no fun being mad at someone. I've got to find Junior. Percy took off running again. Only this time, he was running off to show mercy to Junior. He was Mercy Percy again. We'll pass on the good news to Laura, I shouted. Three o four p.m. Another day, another mess solved. Bob and I hopped back into our car when the mess line rang again. What is it this time, I muttered, picking up my phone. Hi, Detective Larry, said the person on the phone. This is Marvin, the phone guy. I just wanted to let you know that the mess line has been messed up today. Yeah, I noticed. I'm sorry, said Marvin. I made a few mistakes, but I'm working on the problem. I wanted to yell at Marvin, the phone guy. I wanted to tell him he messed up my day and that he'd better fix the mess line pronto or else. But that's when something interesting happened. 'd me my sharpened pencil. As I stared at my pencil, I remembered we all make mistakes. I broke my pencil more than one time today, but my badger didn't get mad, even though he warned me not to press so hard. My badger had sharpened my pencil every time without complaining, without even badgering me about it. Percy was right. It's no fun being mad. Besides, Marvin was fixing the mess line. That's okay, I said to Marvin. We all mess up sometimes. 3.07 p.m. Who was that, Bob asked. Wrong number again? No, it was Marvin the phone guy, I said. He dialed M for mercy, and that's what he got. Dialing M for mercy was definitely the right number. 3.07 To learn more about mercy, read the parable of the unmerciful servant. Check out Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 35. Wow, what an awesome book. I hope you guys haven't read this one before. I had never read it before. Um, but if you have, I hope it was a good reminder that when we're at home and we're with our families, sometimes we can get into messes. And sometimes our siblings or the people around us can cause messes too. But God wants us to show mercy, just like he wants them to show mercy to us when we make mistakes, just like God shows us mercy when we make mistakes too. So we'll see you guys next time.